morning, Facebook friends. The Lord bless you today. Um, I wanted to do something on um, those that are going to be taken off the earth in the rapture when the Lord comes. What you know? What condition you have to be in? Okay. So we're going to use scripture. Uh, the first one is, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For by grace, by the, the grace of God, which is unmerited favor, through faith. So that means what you do, what you say, is all through faith. As we walk through the day, we are walking by faith, not by sight. So we're in a constant state of faith, and we're in a constant state of trusting God no matter what comes your way, no matter what problems, financially, healthy, health-wise, um, you know, divorce, whatever, um, we ought to walk by faith. And we ought to be unspotted from the world because the Bible says that he is coming for a peculiar people that are unspotted from the world without wrinkle, without blemish. And so, um, wrinkles, spots, blemishes, those are all anything that has to do with the world. Anything. And anything that has to do with what's inside here. Pride, um, arrogance, um, you know, just anger. Um, you know, whatever the heart can carry. Uh, that's not of God. And if you go in Galatians, you can find out all the things of the flesh, you know, like variants. is going on all over the world right now, going against governments and all that. Well, God doesn't want us to do that, okay? God just wants us to trust Him and pray for our leaders and move on, okay? Because it, it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. It's not going to get better. And so what I'm saying is this to the Christian. There is no such thing as um, once saved, always saved. You can forget that because that's out the window. You have to endure until the end. If you don't, if you step out of the race, you step out of the kingdom, period. Our walk with God is a daily, daily repentance. Daily. So when you do something wrong, don't let it fester. Go to God right away and get forgiveness. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is you're going to grieve the Holy Ghost. When you grieve the Holy Ghost, you lose the joy of your salvation. When you lose the joy of your salvation, you're thinking God's mad at you and He's not. Go right back. He'll take you right back. Because that's what this walk is. It's a series of falling down, stumbling. You're not going to do everything right. But when you do things wrong, admit it, confess it. God says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's His word. God is always, or preachers are always, and God is always saying, the word of God, the word, the word. God means business. His word is His word. It's not going to falter. It's not going to alter. It's not going to be added to. It's not going to be taken from. If you're smoking, drinking, and all that, get rid of it. Get rid of it. This is your temple. We got to get rid. I used to smoke and drink all the time. As a matter of fact, even as a Christian, I fell back, and I had I had to overcome it again because I knew that it wasn't of God, and I knew that when the when the trumpet blew, and if I was smoking, guess who's not going? Because um, that's, that's a spot. That's a world. God says whoever's a friend of the world is the enemy of God. God wants you to enjoy your life and have that abundant life, which only the Holy Ghost can give you. The abundant life is here. It's, it's not what we can touch. It's not stuff. It's not cars. It's not houses. Um, you know, it's easy to make something your, your, uh, your idol. And you can even make your wife your idol. You can make your kids your idol. If you do, you're not going. He won't take you. He means business. No idolater will enter into the kingdom of God. Go to the list. He'll show you all of what won't enter in. So, only a handful is going to make it. God said many go on the broad way. Few enter into the narrow gate. And the narrow gate is consecration. Faithfulness to the Lord. Faith. Are you tithing? If you're not, you're stealing. Go to Malachi. It says you have robbed God. No thief will enter into the kingdom of God. Tithe means 10%. Does God need your money? No. He don't need your money. But he takes that tithe, and when you give it to God faithfully, because he, he owns the other 90% anyway, 
God will bless you. If you go to Malachi, you'll find out how God will bless you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give into your bosom. So God will, you cannot outgive him. So, uh, speaking of tithe, um, your tithes and offerings, uh, they go to the church, and the church imparts in, in, in it to different places to get souls saved. So, you know, money's helping save souls, too, because it provides the things that they need. You come across a hungry man, and you start preaching the gospel, he don't want to hear that. He want, you want to feed that guy first. Feed him first. Then bring him the gospel. Because then his soul will be comforted. His body will be comforted to hear. He'll be able to receive it right. So then they're going. That are totally enveloped in the Lord. Totally fall in love with the Lord. Fall in love. Because if you don't, if you don't have a relationship with him, if you don't, um, you know, get with him every day. You know, pray without ceasing. That means talk to him all day long. He's with you anyway. Might as well. He's the God of the universe. That's a, that's a miracle in itself to be in us and with us. Yes, things hurt. Yes, you lose your wife, it hurts. Yes, you lose your husband, it hurts. Yes, a death in the family absolutely hurts, and I never want to find out what that is. Even though I lost my twin brother, to lose one of my children, I think it's a, it's a different thing altogether. And to all you out there, I have no idea what that pain is, but I have, by faith, a good idea that it is very, very painful and something that maybe stays with you for the rest of your life. So I pray for you that uh, God will continue to comfort you and get you through that. Um, but he's coming back for those that, you know, have given their lives by sacrifice. That means turn away from the world and everything in the world. If TV's bugging you and there's stuff on TV and you're watching violence and horror movies, stop doing that because it's getting in your mind, which goes to your heart, which darkens the way you feel about the Lord. Okay, It will darken you. You won't feel as loving. You won't feel as, um, as much love for the Lord as you should have. Don't let the Lord look at you when you stand before him and say, I never knew you. You never knew me. Yeah, you never, you never talked to me. You didn't give me the time of day. You were too busy with your job. You were too busy with your wife. You were too busy with your kids. You were too busy going to see a piece of land. You were too busy going to prove your oxen, um, you know, with your job. That's basically what that means, going to prove your oxen with your job and all that. So, you know, anything you put before him, and I mean anything, I don't care what it is, it becomes an idol. And that means a lot. I mean, you can make anything an idol. You've got to let go. You've got to totally surrender and have full submission to the Lord. Now, for all you post-tribs, post-trib raptures, and don't even believe there's going to be one, explain this scripture. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I, so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you, that where I am, that you may be also. So, that's just one scripture. God has not appointed us to wrath. Now, a lot of Post-tribs believe that the wrath begins at the end of the seven-year tribulation, but it doesn't. It begins after the church leaves. When we leave, brothers and sisters, from here, we go to the Bema Seat. And so for seven years, I don't, I don't know if it's going to take seven years for God to judge everybody. Um, I mean, God is all efficient, and he's omniscient, and so I think that it's going to be a fast process, and then we're just going to enjoy um, our seven years. But it's not going to be a seven years like they had here on the earth because there's no time there, so it's going to go quick. Um, they believe that we're going to be um, raptured at the, uh, when Jesus comes in the clouds. Well, sorry about that, but uh, that tells us when he's coming. So there's still going to be news. You're still going to have a television. Um, you're going to be able to see the, uh, the 200 million army, the Red Army of China coming across the valley. They're going to, have, they're going to be panning with cameras and everything on this tremendous event. Uh, don't you think every Christian in the world knows, if they know anything about the Bible, if they studied the Bible, that when that happens, he is going to bust the clouds open. He's going to part the clouds and we'll be able to see him. Because the Bible says, every eye shall see him, even those who pierced him. So that's a warning. Okay, where's the thief? If it's post-trib, where is the thief in the night? Behold, like, because, like I said, when that happens, when, uh, when Armageddon begins, and we'll know it, and it's already, they're already preparing for it right now. We'll know when he's coming. We'll have time to repent. So there is no time. The time to repent is now. 
Stay prayed up. Stay repentant every day. Look, I'm a sinner just like you. I sin too. My mind, my thoughts. Somebody does something, uh, you know, gives me the wrong order at Burger King. I'm going, hey, wake up. You know, my mind's doing that. Hey, wake up, man. You know, get to work, you know. Well, that's not right. You know? And then when there's somebody in, sitting in front of you and, um, you know, you're impatient and the light goes green and you go, it's green, go! You get angry. That's all not of God, all of it. So whatever, whatever's causing you to do that, you need to deal with that. I, I'm sorry for saying you need to deal with that. You need to deal with what God shows you you need to deal with. Okay? I love y'all. I want you to know the rapture is imminent. It's imminent. And um, it's going to happen any second. And so stay prayed up. Stay with the Lord. Get with Him in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. Talk to him all day long. Let him lead you through the day. Let him, let him make your plans for you. Love your life. Love the Lord and enjoy your life. Have fun. You know, have fun. But stay faithful to him. Let your fun be to the glory of God. Okay, only. Alright? Um, I'm not going to tell you what fun is. You have to decide that for yourself. And, and when you get before the Lord and you ask him, you know, what... What's fun? What can we do? You know, can we go here? Whatever. And God will let you know. God will answer you. He'll, 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 he'll arrange your day for you if you get with Him and if you're sincere with Him. Okay? I love y'all. I'm praying for y'all. And if you need prayer, just punch it in on Facebook and I will, begin, I will stop what I'm doing and I will pray immediately. Okay? Y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.